you don't have to spend tons of money on a 12 or 18 however many piece pot and pan set even when you're starting off in your kitchen if you really just took the time to think about all the things that a you are capable of cooking or B, you even like are interested in cooking, you might be able to get away with starting off with like two or three pans and pots that you can start off with and then build your collection as you go. This will end up saving you a lot more money and also getting you like probably the best quality thing that you need and can afford at the time not to mention saving you a ton of space because in those multi-pan sets, you're just left with a whole bunch of stuff that you may or may not use. So the purpose of this video is for me to walk you through uh, the pans that I use as a professional chef, as well as like an avid home cook. And then you can decide for yourself like, oh, what is it that I actually need? And maybe something, you'll find something that you want, or maybe you'll find something that you'll like want to look out for in the future. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to think about is not just the pans themselves, but what they're made out of, the different kind of metals and materials that you want to use. These are stainless steel, these are non-stick, this is carbon steel, and these are cast iron. There's also aluminum and copper, which I do not really recommend for you to have at home. Aluminum being like a little bit more cheaply made, as well as having some like potential health issues associated with it. So it's not really just something you want in your house. And copper just needs to be babied very much as well as not being uh, compatible with induction. So I don't have any copper. And it's also wildly expensive and needs to be like polished. So yeah, I keep stainless steel, nonstick, carbon steel and cast iron in this house. And I use them all for their own specific purposes. Uh, because non-stick has issues at higher temperatures with being not good for you at all, I use them mainly for like low temperature cooking. So if I'm melting cheese or if I am making like a cream sauce, I'd be using that in this or Eggs, non-stick is still like the best thing to cook eggs in because you don't need to use as much oil. So I keep a non-stick frying pan and a small non-stick pot. Um, I have different size frying pans, but apart from that, you don't need an eight piece non-stick set. You'll probably be doing everything you need to do with these two pans and maybe even a bigger or smaller version of this. Uh, so stainless steel is a pretty misunderstood material when it comes to pans. People oftentimes use like tons of oil or gets the pans ripping, ripping hot to try to achieve like a non-stick surface. And it just makes it a little bit more difficult to use if you're trying to use it for that purpose. Using stainless steel for its grippy, like for the fact that it likes to grip on, hold on to food until the sear is complete is actually the feature of it. I love searing steaks and like, uh, I, I love searing proteins in general in stainless steel. And you just kind of have to like trust the process with it. So what you do is you get a pan like pretty ripping hot, add in just a little bit of oil and then you put a steak on it, you put it, leave it on there and just leave it. The steel will grip onto the steak and once the char has caramelized and become like nice and I guess flat, like the, you'll, you'll notice like the, the surface of the steak itself kind of like compresses into like a nice charred flatness. It removes quite easily. And then you flip it over and there you have like a really good indoor sear for your steak. Um, so that is pretty much what I would use this for. It's also like less reactive than say aluminum or cast iron. So you can use it very nicely in like wet applications such as making like a tomato sauce, for example. You can use like a wide uh, walled or a tall walled saute pan so that you can get a nice um, hand crushed tomato sauce um, in there and allowing like a lot of the water to evaporate, but at the same time having it tall enough that you can like make a lot of it for whatever pasta you're going to make. So these are the two uses that I have for stainless steel. One thing I will say is stainless steel walks. Um, they do exist. I would not use them for the purposes that a wok is normally used for, but that being said, because stainless steel does not rust, 
it makes for a really good steamer. Um, so because of its, the wok is wide shaped, you put water at the bottom, you put a net on top of it, you can steam a whole fish or you can steam like dumplings or whatever. It's great for that. But otherwise, I would not use a stainless steel wok for the purposes of a regular wok. In regards to stainless steel, stainless steel is actually like a very poor conductor of heat to the point where whenever you buy like a high quality steel pan set, it's never just solid steel, right? There is layers of stuff. So in here, I'm not saying that that's what is actually in here, but in here it could be a layer of aluminum. It could be a layer of copper. And it could be like, it could be copper sandwiched between two layers of aluminum for whatever reason, for better heat distribution, for better heat conduction, whatever. Just trying to get this outer layer of steel to be better at transferring the heat from your elemental fire source to your food. Um, that's why you'll see a lot of times like there's like five ply or three ply stainless steel uh, cooking appliances. Um, once you get to the five ply point, if you're, they cost more, but in my experience, they're generally quite good. Um, they're all generally quite good. Cast iron and carbon steel. In terms of care, cast iron and carbon steel have the same requirements. They are prone to a little bit of rusting if they're left in moisture for like extended periods of time, but at the same time, they, that can be prevented with a nice little pre-seasoning. And by that, I mean like adding some oil so that no moisture can actually touch the metal. This is a raw carbon steel wok, and these are enameled cast iron Dutch oven and pan. Because these are enameled, they don't need to be seasoned, but that does make them a little bit less durable and a little bit more delicate. You do have to baby these a little bit more. Whereas like with raw cast iron and raw carbon steel, you can, they will take any kind of beating. You can take it camping and do it over and, and use them over an open flame. You can use them over a gas flame. You can use them over like the strongest, craziest, most powerful induction burner you got to the point where they're like glowing red. They're gonna be fine. And that is like, the beauty of raw cast and carbon steel. It might need a little bit more protection, but it is the most durable workhorse that you'll have in your kitchen. And all you have to do is learn how to keep water away from it. These pans and these will outlive you if you take care of them and they can be passed down. And the thing is like, there are a lot of really expensive brands out there but they don't really need to be. Cast iron is cast iron is cast iron. Carbon steel is carbon steel is carbon steel. They're all great. You might wanna invest in stuff with like proprietary like smoothing techniques to make them a little bit more non-stick. But at the same time, if you build, you know, your collection and have like non-stick pans, stainless steel pans, cast iron and carbon steel, like you only have to use these for the best things that they're good at. Cast iron, uh, tends to be a lot more thick, uh, which means that it has better heat retention. Carbon steel is thin, uh, which means like it doesn't have great heat retention, but it has really good heat transference. So if you're putting this over any kind of flame, any kind of energy source, that power will transfer into the bottom of this pan of, of the lighter carbon steel much more quickly, whereas this, it will take more time to come through. Okay, and the main benefit to, like the main benefit and detriment of these is the weight. Cast iron is way, way heavier than carbon steel. It is, uh, carbon steel is a lot more nimble as a result. You're not gonna be able to do a lot of flipping saute motions with a cast iron pan, but with a carbon steel one, you can do it much more easily. A lot of restaurant walks are made of carbon steel. And I think there's only one wok that I know of that's made by a lodge that is made by cast iron, which is great if you don't have very powerful burners. So like, you know, there's a trade off with everything because these are thicker, they hold on to heat better, which means like they don't lose heat as you cook as quickly. Whereas this cools down uh, much faster when you put stuff in there. So when determining which one is for you, think of what kind of stove you have. Do you have a electric coil stove that, you know, takes everything takes forever 
to heat up, you might want to get a something that's cast iron because you know whatever heat you produce, you want to try to keep. If you've got an induction or a gas range where you get lots of power really, really quickly and pretty much an unlimited amount of it that can be controlled really, really fast, go for the carbon steel because retaining heat is not as important to you as it is in cast iron. And then finally, if you liked to uh, make any kinds of braises or uh, stews or soups and stuff like that, the Dutch oven is still like, in my opinion, one of the most unmatched uh, pieces of equipment in a kitchen. It is extremely versatile. The bottom of this can be used as the bottom of this. It can be used as a stock pot. It can be used to make bread. It's fantastic. Um, once you get to a point where you want to cook the stuff that's that you can with this, you'll love it. As far as enameling goes, uh, it does make it easier to clean and it makes it so that you don't have to season your pan to prevent it from rust, rusting. Um, that is that is the benefits of enameling. But again, you might not want to use like metal utensils in these because you might chip that surface and then what are you gonna have? You have a chipped pan. You can use metal utensils in these. Everything else I recommend wood or silicone. For washing, when it comes to cleaning this, obviously this is the easiest, most glorious God-given thing on the planet when it comes time to wash. Never use it in, I know they say dishwasher safe, but the companies that have made this material have lied to us in the past with extreme health, detrimentally like health, uh, with extreme like results in the detriment to our health is the order of words that I was looking for. So I always hand wash these. It also makes them last longer. Non-stick pans probably have I don't know, like maybe a five year, seven year, no, very rarely 10 year shelf life, simply because the coating tends to cuff flake off and you definitely do not want to eat whatever flakes off a nonstick pen. So you baby these things, baby these things, and in return, they will um, provide you with a fantastic nonstick cooking experience. Hand wash them and it's not that hard, like, it's just like one, two wipes and you're practically done. Cleaning stainless steel is a little bit more difficult, but still like because of its durability, it takes to elbow grease very well. You can put these in the dishwasher. It is probably one of the best features of stainless steel. And you can take to a scouring pad, like if you have like a copper, copper wool, you can like scrape off whatever food you have in there. You can like leave it to soak overnight to let that food loosen. And it says stainless steel, but it's odd. Like steel will like change color a little bit based on the different materials in the steel when it is exposed to heat. It's not going to do anything to the food, but if you do not like the look of it and if you wanna keep your stuff really pretty and shiny, there is a material called Barkeeper's Best Friend it is like a powder that you just put on there and you scrub it off with water. It will polish your steel down to like the shiniest of shininess. And yeah, it'll be sparkling new in no time. So that is the beauty of cleaning stainless steel. Enamel cast iron, about the same in regards to like how much work you have to do to get them clean. You know, you might get stains like this Baking soda would take it off, but it does not hinder the cooking or stain any of the surfaces that you're putting it on. So you know what? Evidence of use is not a terrible thing. But yeah, just a gentle touch on the enamel surface itself and maybe leaving food that has really baked on there to soak overnight. And then it should come right off or put that soaking water over some heat the next day and it should come right off. As with anything, go to the manufacturer's instructions on how to clean. I'm just giving you a general overview. Cast iron, naked cast iron, and naked carbon steel. Because it is super, super durable, um, you can pretty much do anything you want to it in regards to how to get caked on food off. You scrape it off, boil it off, 
cook it off. You can like literally cook things down into their carbon components until it's all char and dust and then just like rinse it off with water. That'll be fine too. The only thing you should not do is like go at it with some really strong dish soap, of which most dish soaps are no longer all that strong because it might remove the seasoning layer off of it. But you can use a tiny bit of mild dish soap if it's really dirty, give it a good scrubbing with a regular sponge, rinse it off and then recoat it with oil and then go over like your general seasoning order and it'll be fine. A little soap will not destroy your cast iron seasoning or carbon steel seasoning layer. But most of the times when I'm cooking with a wok because of the high temperatures and stuff, everything literally just turns into char and I will take a bamboo brush and some running water and just scrape everything out and it'll be perfectly fine. So in conclusion, uh, what pan you're asking, John, should I get? Well, again, that really depends on what you wanna cook. If you're just learning how to cook and if you're just starting off, I do recommend you just getting some frying pans and maybe a pot to start because, you know, everything can be done in each other. It's just like what makes, they just make certain things about them, make them easier. If you're an eggs, if you're an eggs person, you're gonna want to get something that's non-stick. If you wanna do like eggs and bacon, maybe one of these. If you're gonna cook a lot of bacon, I would suggest you using a baking sheet because bacon in the oven is superior. And we haven't even gotten into like any of like the baking pans that you have. Uh, this is strictly, we're just talking for like stovetop stuff at this point. So yeah, that is my recommendations on what kind of pans you get. You just really wanna think about what it is you want to cook first and then buy it. Like don't spend like the multi hundred up to a thousand dollars in pans that you may or may not use. You'll save your money and you'll get the best of the things that you actually need.